I don't know about you, but I've always enjoyed installing dado trunking. So much of our work as electricians gets buried away out of sight, and that's as it should be. But dado trunking mounted proudly on the surface of a classroom or an office or my lounge is an opportunity to show the world just what we can do with its neat lines, smooth curves and tight joints. In fact, I enjoy installing it so much that for this video, I decided to share the pleasure with Rick by letting him do the installation work instead. You feeling the cold there, Rick? Yeah, it's a little bit nippy at the moment. It is, isn't it? But there is one area of installing dado trunking that always used to drive me up the wall, and with one particular fitting in the Sterling curve range, Marshall Tuflex have made it so much easier to do properly. So have a guess in the comments which bit I used to hate, and we'll see if you're right at the end of the video, along with the solution. But first, let's have an overview of the trunking. It's a three compartment trunking with the base unit molded from one single piece of plastic, which I've always preferred over the cones where you have to clip the top and the bottom sections to the middle. They can get a little bit messy. You can get it either as separate components of base and lids to suit, or as whole sections complete with lid. It's also got the option of replacing the curved lid on the bottom with square shaped lids instead. This option allows you to install the trunking at floor level if it's being used as skirting trunking and the square lid sits flush with the floor making cleaning a lot easier. There's an additional type of lid available as well but we'll come to that in a minute when we discuss how this trunking can help you to comply with part M of the building regs. You may be wondering if you can replace the top section of lid with the square section as well. Now theoretically you could but I wouldn't recommend it for two reasons. One, it's not really designed for that purpose because, believe it or not, if you've got a square profile at the top of the trunking, people are sometimes inclined to use it as some kind of shelf. I know, I'm as shocked as you are. So having the curved profile at the top helps prevent that from happening and also to stop dust from gathering. People will just have to find another place to precariously and inappropriately balance their coffee cups. The second reason it's not recommended is that the fittings that join pieces of trunking together come in two forms, P1 and P2. This is just shorthand for Profile 1 and Profile 2. Profile 1 fits around the sterling curve when it's got a curved lid top and bottom, and Profile 2 fits when you've got curved lid at the top and square at the bottom. You've got all the fittings you'd expect for joining together good quality trunking, including couplers, end caps and internal and external bends for going around corners. There's also flat 90s and T's, but these also come in a couple of different formats. You get them complete with bases that simply butt up to the trunking and then the lid on the trunking goes on and then the lid on the fitting slightly overlaps that to cover up the join and maintain the IP rating of the trunking. These are great because it provides continuity for the three different compartments of trunking and even allow you to maintain the required bending radii for data and mains cables. If, however, that segregation of different types of cable isn't required, then you can get a variation of these fittings that simply act as lids that snap directly onto the trunking, saving a bit of installation time. I'm particularly a big fan of this T fitting because it allows every single compartment of every single piece of trunking that it joins together to access every other compartment while still maintaining that segregation. So you can see you can get from the center compartment here through there and get up into this compartment if you needed to or you can go over that one if there's uh, data cables coming down there into the bottom segment here but you can also come along over that little bump there that maintains that segregation and then go up inside there into that center compartment. I think that's really smart. Another really nice feature on this range of products are these very subtle grooves manufactured into the lids of the connectors. These provide sight lines, which helps to contribute to the great aesthetics and fresh clean lines of this product. A couple of other key features include a bio trunking option, which provides added antibacterial protection. This protection isn't a surface treatment that will wear off from repeated touching, but is actually built into the product and can be used in conjunction with wiring accessories with similar features. This is really important for hospitals, obviously, but is increasingly being specified in schools and colleges in our much changed modern world. In fact, it's so important that the bio finish is held in stock for the Profile 1 version, so you don't have huge lead times when you're trying to get hold of the product. Indeed, it's so effective that this type of trunking from Marshall Tuflex was used in the Nightingale hospitals back in the crisis days, and once all those places were shut down, the trunking didn't get chucked into landfill, but rather went back to Marshall Tuflex for recycling and remanufacturing back into new product. Speaking of recycling, one of the fantastic things about Marshall Tuflex trunking is it's made from 66% recycled PVC, much of this coming from old window frames and the like. The base sections are 100% made from recycled products, 
and the lids are a mix of recycled and new materials to maintain colour and gloss level consistency on this premium range. Now let's talk about some of the stuff you can install into the trunking. There's the usual one and two gang boxes to go in here, but again some really cool variants including ones that have a darker colour surrounding them. This means that when a white socket is installed on here, it creates a high contrast between the socket and its surroundings as required by part M of the building regulations that deals with access to and the use of buildings. This high contrast makes it easier for partially sighted people to locate and make use of socket outlets and other accessories. The Sterling range offers charcoal and blue box surrounds and spacers, and you can also get a charcoal coloured lid for the central section of the trunking if you want to maintain that run of colour throughout. One of the other cool variants of back box that I certainly hadn't seen before are these ones that allow you to adjust the depth of the back box. Really handy if your mounted accessories don't need a lot of room in the box behind them, but you've got lots of cables to run behind the boxes in the trunking. I think they are a really great idea. Another really great little device that works well with this range is what's called the main crossover bridge. This sits in the middle compartment of the trunking and allows band one cables to be routed from one of the outer compartments to the other while maintaining segregation from the mains cables running through the centre section. Speaking of segregation, in places where you want a higher level of integrity in data transfers, you can add these steel screening dividers into the top and middle compartments so that not only do you not have to worry about the correct insulation on the conductors, but also when these are earthed via these little bonding straps, there is a big reduction in the electromagnetic contamination of the signals in the data cable. All of this ensures that the dado trunking is CAT 7A compliant as well. And finally, to help prevent the premature collapse of the wiring system in the event of a fire, there's the option to install these firefly clips. They're formed in different shapes to fit into the different compartments. So for example, this larger rectangular one is designed to sit in the central compartment, and then you've got a smaller one with a rectangular front for if you decide to use the square lid on the bottom section. If, however, you decide to go with the curved lid, there's a dedicated clip to fit in there as well. Whichever one you're making use of, you simply fix into the wall through the trunking and the screw goes through this little hole in the back of the clip. The front of the clip can then be opened up, the cable's inserted, and then close up the clip again, and the cable is retained behind a fire resistance support. And as an extra bonus, they also serve to hold the cables in place when you're installing them, or if you come back at a later date to do some maintenance or install some extra cables, they'll stop the cables from falling onto the floor when the lids are removed. So all in all, an absolute pleasure to work with this trunking, or at least to watch Rick working with it. But I mentioned at the outset the part of installing this stuff that I absolutely used to hate. Did you guess what it was? Well, it's when you're bringing dado trunking around a corner, either an internal angle or an external angle, and the walls aren't quite square. The fittings that join the two pieces together never sit correctly, and it's just so frustrating because you get gaps opening up and you're always compromising the connection to one or other of the trunking sections. Well, these devices here aim to solve that problem. This one is an adjustable external bend, and this one is an adjustable internal bend, and they'll both allow the trunking to be away from a right angle by five degrees in both directions, giving a range of 85 to 95 degrees. So if the walls are not perfectly square, it's not the end of the world and you won't get all those unsightly gaps popping up where you don't want them. It makes achieving a really good finish really easy and you can complete your work with pride. Just something to note, these are prototype models that have been 3D printed, hence the different colour. The product you'll receive will be the same clean, pure white as the rest of the trunking. And Marshall Tuflex like to stay just as flexible as their adjustable bends and are the only manufacturer to offer the choice of both fixed and adjustable bends. So for installations where the walls are square or if it's a bit price sensitive, the fixed bends can still be used. If you're wondering why we've got so many sockets on this section of trunking, check out our free training package on dado trunking and the regulations that relate to it by clicking this link right here. Thank you very much for watching.